three teams began 2020 vying for this prestigious honor. These three military academies are training to protect our nation's freedom. But on the football field, they battle each other for the annual coveted prize, the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. Today, the Air Force Falcons will face the Army Black Knights in a game with a trophy on the line. The Falcons are seeking to reclaim the CIC for the first time in four years after their dominant performance over the midshipmen earlier this season. Touchdown, Air Force. What a statement from the Falcons. They're going to cause some havoc to give Army everything they can ask for for this trophy. Meanwhile, the Black Knights shut off their arch rival maybe last Saturday in an historic rivalry game to put themselves in this winner-take-all contest. The Black Knights hold their ground and going the wrong way and drop through at safety. A zero. Held them to a zero. A victory on their home field for Army. The stakes could not be higher on the banks of the Hudson. The Falcons. The Black Knights, brothers in arms, battle each other for the Covenant Commander in Chief's Trophy. College Football CBS Sports Network is presented by the Home Depot. Today, from historic Mikey Stadium, the 49th Commander in Chief's Trophy winner will be determined. Air Force beat Navy, Army beat the midshipmen, so it all comes down to this. Welcome to the Mid-Hudson Valley, Mikey Stadium in the booth. Dave Ryan alongside Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, joined by Tina Servassi on field level as well. And Ross, when you played the National Football League, you went for the Lombardi Trophy trying to win the Super Bowl. For these guys, the CIC Trophy means everything. Yeah, and I know that there's a lot of other conference championship games going on today. Dave, you will never convince me that there's any game more important than this one out here right now, especially for those Air Force seniors who have never won a CIC trophy. What a story for Army defense this year. A brick wall, lockdown defense. How about Navy last week? 117 total yards, four first downs, two shutouts this year for the Army defense. And Russ, we checked the Home Depot Do Project Smarter goal line defense, a big key last week. They will be talking about this goal line stand forever. How about third down? Senior linebacker John Raddick, and I thought Navy was going to get in there, just barely brings him down inches short. And then again, seniors like nose tackle Nick Stokes. Amadeo West stuffing them again on fourth down. Like I said, we'll be talking about that for years. Up and down year for Air Force. No question, only five games played so far, and they're not going to play in a bowl game this year. But we do know they've got a really good quarterback in Hazik Daniels. He has been extremely impressive. Didn't play last year. He was injured. But he won the job in fall camp. He's dynamic as a runner. You see what he did against Navy, the cutback against Utah State, their last game out. But where he's really improved is throwing the football. In particular, in their last game against Utah State, 7 of 9, 127 yards, including that touchdown pass to Ben Peterson. Troy Calhoun is the only Air Force Academy graduate to lead the program as a head coach, a quarterback in his playing day, sparkling 10-3 and record head-to-head -head against Army. Let's go down to Tina, field level. Well, Dave, coming off that emotional win over Navy just a week ago, Army head coach Jeff Munkin described to me how wonderful it was to celebrate in that locker room. He said with the superintendent, with the Army athletic director and all of that army brass and leadership from the Pentagon but every single player could still see the empty trophy case staring right back at them and it gave those players a sense of purpose that the Air Force game was still ahead so it was not hard for this army football team to quickly turn their focus to preparing for Air Force which is also a heated rivalry and this is always a hotly contested game and today Dave they are playing straight up for that CIC trophy the trophy tina is here navy brought it with them as the winner last year and it's here at mikey stadium covid 19 protocols today 2,000 fans allow the west point staff faculty immediate family in the usma bubble here on post face coverings and social distancing is required it's chilly it's the latest game ever in army football history in terms of a calendar date december 19th winners two days away 27 degrees it was a uh, snowy here a couple days back, a blizzard blew through the northeast, about two feet of snow on the ground. Four cadets not here. They're home. There are a few fans, as we saw Ross, but not exactly the atmosphere we had last week for the Army-Navy game. No, and understandably, you know, the cadets able to go home for the holiday break. But it's cool that they were able to bring some of the members of the community in here to experience this. And 
Man, I got to tell you, Dave, I have chills right now. There are very few times in your life that you get to take a field knowing you are playing for a championship. It is so special. Let's do this. Can't wait. Army has won the toss, electing to defer. Joshua Stoner will receive the kickoff from Landon Salyers. To begin our game today, Army Air Force is underway. Only one kickoff return all year. And that was from Ben Peterson against San Jose State. Fair caught, 25-yard line here for Air Force. Starting lineup presented by Rogue Fitness. Falcons last game, Ezekiel Daniels completed seven passes, 127 yards, a long touchdown to Ben Peterson, the win at Utah State. He ran for a TD as well against the Aggies. That was back on December 3rd. He started every game this year in the Falcons' abbreviated season after missing all of last year due to an injury. Troy Calhoun, head coach, Ross told us this week he's approved. Week by week, and his best days are ahead of him. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he was really fourth or fifth string a year ago, and now he's starting with a championship on the line. One play on first down. It's successful for Brad Roberts. And he lumbers ahead for about six. As you can see, the left side of the offensive line is really the strength for Air Force. But I love Ben Peterson, number 27. They list him as a wide receiver. He's really more of a wing back, and he does all the dirty work. Triple option offense for Air Force, the same for Army. Different look for the Falcons. They might throw quite a bit today. Daniels, Reeves, Daniels. It was a good move and bumped out of bounds, but we'll have a first down tackle made by Jabari Moore, the boundary corner for Army. Well, I've talked about the defensive line for Army a lot this year, in particular Nolan Cockrell, number 95. He was awesome last week against Navy. I thought it was interesting when Army head coach Jeff Munkin said he would play anywhere in the country, and he's played like that all year, only a junior. You're going to have to have another awesome game today. Matthew Mola. He'll be back here behind Daniels. Now first down for Air Force. Here's Daniels. Throwing for the first time. Deep ball is intercepted. Picked off by Cameron Jones. Early turnover on the defense, and they'll take over first and 10 on the 14 yard line. Big play for Jones, the pick against Mercer earlier this year, Ross, another one comes here today. I don't know why Daniels threw this football. He goes deep down the middle of the field. Cunningham is the single high safety in the middle of the field. He gets his right hand on it, goes right to Cam Jones. I swear the ball finds Cam Jones when he plays. He's the fourth corner for Army, but he started a couple games and he gets his hands on the ball every time he plays. Sophomore from Carson, California. And the pick for Daniels. You really His cannot. Interception of the yeah, sorry, Dave. You really cannot throw that football when there's a deep safety in the middle of the field. I mean, that's his whole job for Cedric Cunningham is to be there for any deep shots in the middle of the field. That's one Hazik Daniels would like to have back. Tyler offense for Army Taylor. And a midline read on first down. Tyler lunges ahead for a couple. Give him two. Rogue fitness starting lineup for Army. Amazing to think that before the UTSA game in October, the sophomore Tyre Tyler had never taken a college snap at quarterback. He was a slot back mostly on the scout team due to multiple injuries, some ineffective play. He's emerged as a top QB. He's only 5'8", 185, sophomore Newport News, Virginia. He'll take a lot of punishment today running the triple option offense. He is one tough kid. Been so impressed with how he's bounced back from adversity the last couple weeks. Hicks on second down. Drop by Parker Norris. Check some more lineups here, Ross. Well, at left tackle, it's going to be Jordan Law because the senior, J.B. Hunter, is out. So Luke McCleary moves over to the right side. Jordan Law is a freshman who's played extremely well when given an opportunity. He's got a bright future, but obviously this is a big moment for him starting against Air Force as a freshman. Sam McCoy lead back here. And the keep for Tyler. The spot to the 24 is really close. I mean, he's got first down for Army. Just enough to move the chains for the Black Knights.
Jaden Thiergood, who's starting a defensive end for Air Force. Freshman from Chicago, replacing Michael Purcell. He's played pretty well at that spot. Ross, you saw these guys in Logan against Utah State earlier this year. Yeah, this would be a significant injury for Air Force because Michael Purcell, who's the typical starter at defensive end, he's already out today. So Jaden Thiergood, who's really the backup nose guard, slides over to defensive end to get the start. So if Thiergood's out, they're taking a major hit along the depth of the defensive line. They're good helped off by Air Force trainers. Air Force wearing the red tail special uniforms Ross today. Second time this year to honor the Tuskegee Airmen. They were so instrumental in World War II flying the P-51 aircraft. Also won the Wore those uniforms against Navy earlier this year and a 40 to 7 win. Part of their APLS Air Power Legacy Series uniforms. Pretty cool look. Definitely a cool look and very cool to honor the Tuskegee Airmen for sure. They're going to help top first down on Fullback time up the middle. For Santa McCoy gets a cup. For Air Force defensively, I love the George Sylvanic story. This guy was playing offensive line until a week before the first game. And now he leads the team with sacks, tackles for loss. He's second in overall in tackles with 23. Troy Calhoun told us that he, his wife said, why didn't that guy play before? That's a good question. <laughs> we asked him that. Tyler bounces off a couple tacklers, finally nailed by George Sylvanic, right on cue. It was just a monster up front for Air Force. Yeah, this is quarterback zone. There's no read there. Tyre Tyler is just following Peyton Reed of the right guard, Santa McCoy, the fullback. That's his run all the way. Brings up another third and short here. Really good sign. This is obviously where Army loves to live, and they usually bring in Jacoby Buchanan for this. Wrecking ball, B back is there. Tire tire to keep that spot looks pretty good. Very so close. About the 34, which he needed. I think the chance we will get here. It's just not first down. Again here for Army. That's the keys of the game brought to by Ryan. Well, for Air Force, certainly you want to get off to a fast start, try to make Army play from behind, and then they threw the ball so well against Utah State. We'll see if they can do that again. Obviously not a great start with the interception. For Army, protect the football. They've only lost one game in the Jeff Munkin era, according to offensive coordinator Brent Davis, when they don't turn it over. On first down. Up the middle. Buchanan. Lumbers ahead. So no Cade Barner today. Anthony Atkins is also out. So Buchanan, Santa McCoy. Tyson Riley should be carrying the load here for Brent Davis, the offensive corner up in the press box with us for Army. The yeah, Army actually is without 50 guys today for various reasons. That is a lot of guys they have out. And in particular, a fullback, they usually like to roll four guys through there. I think we'll see primarily McCoy and Buchanan. McCoy's so good without the ball. Buchanan, usually when he's in, he's getting the ball. McCoy back in, 20 career touchdown runs. Robinson gets a touch. Stop made by Elisha Paul, cornerback for Air Force. Gain of four. Yeah, look at the lead here. This is a playoff they did last time. Watch Elijah Paul, number two, their leading tackle. Look at that ankle tackle right there. Good job not getting too nosy inside. Tyrell Robinson made the right read to balance that outside. And if Palm doesn't make that tackle, Robinson probably goes a long way. Palm leads them with 30 tackles because he's been able to make plays like that. Seven and a half tackles per game over the last four for Air Force. Only played five games this year. Three and two, the big win over Navy. A couple of Mountain West losses to good teams in Boise State and San Jose State playing today for the Mountain West title. Third down balls on the ground. An issue certainly for Tyre Tyler. Air Force looking for a second crack at it. Falcons think they've got it. Let's get the indication for the official Air Force ball at the 40. Three fumbles, Tyler Tyler, Georgia Southern game first half. Better ball security last week. A problem here today. And Will Trewick, the senior from Willow Park, Texas, emerges with the ball. Yeah, it looked like it was a split zone lead play, and Tyler wanted to pull it. 
I don't know if Robinson wasn't on the same page or what. That is a critical error by two young players right there. We already have two turnovers in the game. It's an early storyline. They're playing today for the Commander in Chiefs Trophy. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. By Verizon. The network more people rely on gives you more. And by Advil. Payne says you can't. Advil says you can Two CIC games earlier this year. Air Force knocked off Navy in Colorado Springs in October 47. So much emotion with Amadeo West, one of the captains of Army, beating Navy last weekend here. 15 0. What's at stake? Air Force going for its series leading 21st CIC trophy, Army for its ninth here today. The Army fumble. Daniels and company take over on the first down play, which yields a big gain for Brad Roberts. Turns through traffic, second level, and then some gets to the 24 of Army in a first down. Watch the block by the right guard, Kyle Krebs, just an inside trap right here. Boom, right there on Nolan Cockrell. Nice job cutting it behind it by Roberts there. A big gain right up the middle. Air Force has a lot of success with that little inside trap there, and Krebs gets overshadowed by the guys on the left side, but he's had a terrific year himself. Roberts again. Max tackles forward, gets to about the 20. Four more yards for Air Force. And you know, that was just a power play to the right. One of the things that's really interesting to me watching Air Force is they don't run nearly as much option as do Army and Navy. A lot more traditional football. You know, they just had an inside trap followed by a power. Neither one of those are midline or triple option plays. That's up. Second down and six here. Roberts featured B-back behind Daniels. Roberts again. Not much this time. Nolan Cockrell makes the tackle. Today's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Some numbers for Air Force this year inside the 20. So it's third and three for Air Force, but at this point on the field, depending on how many yards they get here on third down, they could very easily go for it on fourth. The good thing about Roberts is he's never had a loss of yardage on a carry. He's always going forward. Eight straight down for Roberts. He takes the rock on third down. Drag backwards. Mark shy by about half a yard. Now to the game of two, fourth down for Air Force. What do you think they've got in mind here? You know, this is decision time for Troy Calhoun. He's sending out the field goal kicker. I think he believes there isn't going to be very many points in this game. We're talking about two top ten defenses in college football. He wants to get the first three up there. I understand that. I think there's a lot to be said for scoring first. I can tell you this much right now, though. Army would go for it. You know, when you have these offenses, fourth and short, you expect to get those. So, Interesting decision from Calhoun. Tevi, shoot, no ball. From 32. Wow. He misses it. No good. Well, it goes from an interesting decision to an awful decision if you actually end up missing the kick. Wow. Air Happen. Force gets a huge break with that fumble. They get all the way down to the 15 yard line and they come up empty. Still goose eggs on the scoreboard, and Jeff Munkin loves it. Navy couldn't handle us. Break on Air Force. Three Air Force. Thank you. One and all for your service. No score. Snowy, West Point, New York. Time for some fast facts brought to you by Advil. Mikey Stadium goes back to 1802. Well, the USMA does. Mikey Stadium <laughs> built a little bit later than that. 1924. The first time ever in Academy history, Ross, they've had eight home games in a single season. This has been a very unusual 2020. That Army takes over off the missed field goal from shoot pelts roll of Air Force. 
Tyler the ring. Tyler Tyler has the edge and a good pickup for Army as he crashes into the Black Knight bench. Watch Tyler. It's quarterback zone. He's running all the way. Good job sealing the edge. Brandon Walters, number 11. When there's a good Army run, it's usually behind Brandon Walters, number 11, which is amazing. He's 180 pounds, and he's pound for pound, I would argue, the best blocker on Army. Absolutely love a 180-pound guy that sacrifices his body the way Walters does. Here's first down to gain of 11. Tyler's been really busy. Hit hard by Alicia Palm. As Ross talked about, team's leading tackler with 30 hits entering the game here today. To get back to Brandon Walters' key on punt coverage against Navy in the Fog Bowl here last week. You were here on radio. Pretty wild. It, that was something I had never experienced before. I mean, second quarter, I was calling it completely off the monitor. I could barely even see the players on the field. Tyler Tyler continues to carry the football here for Army. It's his ninth carry already here in the first quarter. Armed Forces football, Bradley supported by Rogue. A scoreless game. 49th Commander and Chiefs Trophy is on the line here today at Mikey Stadium. And I understand why Calhoun kicked the field goal, Dave, just in the sense that I don't think there's going to be very many points in this game. I just don't envision that. I think it'll be very similar to last week. I think he wanted to try to get some points on the board, but if you miss it, obviously it's all for now. Tyler puts a foot in the ground, goes north, gets the first down, out to about the 42-yard line of the Black Knights. Chains on the move again. Watch Sandin McCoy. Anytime you see a quarterback zone, watch number three. He'll find somebody, boom, right there. Knocks him down to the ground. Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator, told us that Sandin McCoy is, and I quote, a savage without the football. And you better believe he is. I don't know, by the way, Dave, if he's getting NFL looks or not, but he should. He's agile. He's a terrific blocker. I think there's a place for him. 5-11, 230, I'm with you. He has been a wrecking ball. That savage combat. That's a good one for Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator. Run plays out to the 45, gain it to for Army. I'm glad they gave the ball to McCoy there, though, because there's a little bit too much of a tendency, if you think about it, because McCoy is such a savage without the ball, and Jacoby Buchanan isn't as good without the ball as a blocker. He's more of a ball carrier. You want to change that up sometimes. Sometimes you don't give it to Buchanan. Sometimes you do give it to McCoy. Here's Tyler staying busy. His 11th carry, and he's enveloped quickly. Lots of pressure. And McKinley O'Neill, who's replaced Jaden Thiergood, defensive end for Air Force, what a play. Yeah, really nice job there by Air Force. Take it on the block, and then they've done a nice job chasing things down. O'Neill there, the junior, from the backside. If you're doing a good job staying in your gap and not giving up any ground on the play side, a lot of times it'll be that backside D lineman that ends up making the play and puts Army in an uncomfortable situation, third and eight. Tyler has run the ball, 11 of Army's 15 plays so far. Confusion there, trouble Tyler Tyler, but gets out of trouble and gets the edge, midfield and then some, with a really nice improvisation by Tyler Tyler. And eventually run out of bounds by Damani Hands for a Bear Force. Yeah, it's going to be counter. You'll see both these guys pull, but there's penetration. This is not what it's supposed to look like. Watch the right guy right there. Oops, a little penetrated, but he was still able to get outside. McCleary, take your right hand out there. That's all you needed. Right there on Trey Wick, just enough to get Tyler the first down. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be a lot. You know, sometimes when you're blocking Dave, you just run an interference. You're just kind of getting in the way. And a nice stiff arm at the end by Tyler. New quarterback, Christian Anderson. What Muck had said, we see him in the first half. It's early. Replaces Tyre Tyler. He's got 50 rushing yards. Anderson with a nice cut. And a pickup for Army again. Parker Nord, the stop defensively for Air Force. But about nine viable yards picked up by Christian Anderson. Knocked out of the Abilene Christian game. Get in and out of the lineup. Start against Tulane as Tyler's being looked at by... Army trainers. Yeah, they're wiping for the Bronx and Anderson. Yeah, they're wiping stuff off of his face and off of his eyes. He got up 
you can see he was looking at his hands. I don't know if it's some of the little tire bits, the black tire bits from the field got him or what? New Cannon. Parker Noren, Hansford and Company pushing backwards. That progress is really close. Let's take a look here. He put some blood there with Tyler Tyler. So what do we say, top of the broadcast? This is not, he's a Dominion of Dynamo. Dynam he's yeah. not a huge guy. Five, eight, maybe that's generous. He takes a beating. Leading this triple option offense for him. Yeah, his nose was bleeding, and I, maybe he didn't notice it until after that next play when he ran for the first down. Third and very short, almost always Jacoby Buchanan time for Army. Right on cue with Buchanan. And that spot is good for a first down again. So, as we talked about throughout the season, Ben Holden, Anderson, Ballard, Jones, Tyler, all have started. Start four quarterbacks. That's not the record, actually. Six is the record, which has happened several times in Academy history in terms of starting multiple QBs here. That's part of, by the way, what I love about the sport. It's such a team sport. It takes everyone. It's taken all of those guys. It's taken all 100-plus guys for Army to get here this year. Hey. Captain Sam McCoy powers forward, keeps on trucking, gets to the 31-yard line. Tackled by Will Trawick, senior of Willow Park, Texas. Had his first start, career high six tackles 16 days ago when Air Force played his last game in Logan against Utah State. Yeah, I was curious, as looks like Army's going to take it to the end of the quarter. I was curious to see what the layoff would mean for Air Force and how Army would come back from that emotional win against their arch rival Navy last week. But so far, it doesn't appear to be a real factor. Doesn't look like either team has an edge as a result of that. Now keep in mind, Army's scheduled to play a week from today in the Independence Bowl against possibly a Pac-12 team. We'll find out more as the week develops on that story. One quarter complete here from Mikey Stadium. No score. Army Air Force, you're watching God Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot. Getting set, start of the second quarter at Mikey Stadium. Tina Field Level has a special guest, General James C. McConville, Chief of Staff of the United States Army. And it is an honor to be joined once again by General McConville. General, you have led our country in so many important battles. Operation Enduring, Free, uh, Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom. So you know what lies ahead for these young men in Army and Air Force. Watching this game today and last week when you were here for the Army-Navy game, what does that show you about these young men? Well, this is a great day here at West Point. We're seeing some of the best that, that America has to offer on the field today from the Army and from the Air Force. And these young men, when they finish this game, and then next summer they'll be joining uh, their colleagues and going off to serve our country. And, General, you bring with you the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy here today. What does it mean to you to be able to present that to the winner of this game? Well, this is really special to, to be here, and I'm just so proud of these um, young men that want to serve the country. I just returned from overseas, and there's uh, young men and women all across the uh, globe doing incredible things for, for our military, protecting our nation so we can have days like today. Sir, thank you so much for joining us today, General McConville. It is an honor to have you here. Well, it's great to be you too, Tina. Thank you. Dave, back to you. Tina, thank you. Great to hear from General James C. McConville, Chief of Staff, United States Army. Playing for the CIC Trophy today. These two academies as we begin the second quarter. Tyron Tyler returning at quarterback for the Black Knights. Second quarter's underway. AJ Howard has a carry. Bennett, good defensive play again by Elisha Palm, who's been active defensively. Rare force game of five. Can everybody just watch Santa McCoy every time he doesn't have the ball? Watch this lead block right here. Watch number three. He is coming to get you. Watch this lead right here. Boom! Right there. Another nice run. They ran that a lot last week against Navy out of the gun. They'll sometimes just run the lead there. Sometimes they'll run split zone. They've had a lot of success with it. He's been fantastic. Carries here on third down and the real McCoy. Team captain has got enough for another Army first down inside the 25 of Air Force. 20 career touchdown runs, 10 this year to lead the Black Knight attack. You know, both teams are actually running the ball a little better than I thought they would, Dave. You know, after last week where it was less than 150 yards rushing for each team, 
Both teams are having success on the ground. You know, these are awesome defenses. I'm a little surprised by that. Here's first down. Tyre Tyler. Hansford. Tackle from behind again for Air Force. Corners are going to be relied upon Ross to make a lot of tackles. Boy, this would be a big loss. And the McCoy's down. Wow. You know, he's a senior captain. He's got 10 touchdowns this year, 20 for his career. We've highlighted him a number of times. They're already without their two of their top four fullbacks. That'd be tough. Let's take a look at what happened to Army senior captain and fullback Sandon McCoy. He's right there, lead blocking for Tyler. And this is almost how it always happens. You're blocking somebody, you get rolled up into the back. Looks like it was his right lower leg there. He is now in the tent. Remember, they are without Anthony Atkins and Cade Bernard, two of their top four fullbacks. So with McCoy out, Jacoby Buchanan is really the last man standing out of the four fullbacks that they've used primarily all season. Three three timeout. Second down. Buchanan, be back. Right line, Tyler Tyler. Face the end, keeps. Rise forward. Still moving. Side, the 50 and the 14 yard. Our forces football proudly supported by Verizon. Joel Jonathan Youngblood, inside linebacker, freshman from Atlanta. Couple starts this year. Tackle for loss in the win against New Mexico. Abbreviated season for Air Force. I want certainly many games they're going to play. Sets up third and short. Really can it. The wrecking ball gets down to the 10 yard line. And another first down for Army Campbell. Yep, just fullback midline. Watch this. Right to Buchanan. What a push by the left side. I mean, that left side of the offensive line pushed him back a couple yards off the ball. What's interesting about that, it was unbalanced to the right. So that was the tight end. Chris Cameron lined up at tackle there, knocking back the Falcons. 260 pounds of power for Buchanan. Chris Cameron try to help out Tyre Tyler. Pushes him forward inside the 10 to about the nine yard line. The second goal coming up. You know, Jacoby Buchanan played high school lacrosse. And Mikey Stadium is the home of the Army lacrosse program as well. Led by their great coach, Patriot League Joe Maurice. So at 260 pounds of lacrosse stick in his hands, what do you think about trying to defend that guy? That would be scary, and you can tell but that's probably part of the reason why he has fancy footwork. <laughs> yeah, something great athlete. Second and goal. Tyler tries to turn the corner. Between the left tackle and left guard. No push inside. Linebacker for Air Force makes the play. Gain of three. And just that quarterback follow there that they run a lot. Third and a good six and a half here. I think if they get within two yards, they'd probably go for it on fourth down. Otherwise, I would envision Jeff Munkin kicking the field goal to get the lead. But it's going to depend on what they do here. They like either the split zone or the split zone follow with Tyler out of his formation. Here's third down. A fake run. Throw instead ends up for Cameron. Incomplete. Corbin Taylor, strong safety. The assistance on the breakup for Air Force fourth down. Left side of your screen. Cameron's open. Tyler throws it to him just a little bit behind him. I think Cameron probably thinks he should have caught it. Let's take one more look at it. Ooh, wow. You know what? I think Palm got a fingertip on it. What a job by Tyler to throw that right between two Air Force defensive backs. Cameron almost caught it. Win Moretzky in for the field goal try. And he's got it. Knuckles it through from 24. We've got our first points of the Army Air Force matchup playing for the Commander Chiefs Trophy at West Point today. Got a shot, Dave. Sorry. Uh, I do think that that Saints Chiefs game tomorrow on CBS, probably the game of the year. I mean, might be a, a Super Bowl preview. Drew Brees is back. I know I'll be watching that one. No doubt. You'll be watching Browns Giants tomorrow night. Radio too, huh? Yeah, look good weekend to for it. you, man. Hey, I, lo I love the doubleheader weekend. Sagar's going to kick off here after Moretzky. He was two for three against Navy in the fall here last week. 15-0 blanking in the mids. 
Jumped the four for five in the year. So how about a little refreshment? Kicks here at Joshua Stoner. No surprise. Fair catch. Now time for a day in the life brought to you by Verizon Parker Ferguson, two-time All-Mountain West offensive lineman. For Air Force, for more on the O-line and their special model, let's go back down to team. Yeah, Ferguson is part of an incredible Air Force or offensive line. Ferguson and senior Noah Laufenberg, they've been named first team All-Mountain West. That's the second year that two players have made on Air Force, have made uh, that honor. And by the way, this uh, nickname for this offensive line, they go by the name Diesel. In fact, this started last year, and they have hats that represent it. The guys actually bought them at a truck stop. They're old, they're dirty, and they kind of symbolize these guys. Roberts and Smith meet head to head. Eric Smith, middle linebacker for Argentina. Those hats brought about four bucks each, I guess. Started last year. <laughs> yeah. Talked about, but you gotta love the model, the nickname, right? Yeah, absolutely. Brings you back to the John Riggins Washington day. Let's crank up that diesel. You see, Eric Smith had a team high nine tackles last week, picking up right where he left off, trying to put Air Force in second and long situations. Second and nine. Robert stays busy. Gets the second level. Gets to about the 34. And needs another yard and a half or so for an Air Force first down. Give me. Yeah, right before the snap, he actually got a couple more yards of depth. That's just inside zone right there. And Nolan Cockrell actually ran around the block a little bit, which created a big hole there. Usually you want to fight pressure with pressure. Cockrell went around it, brings up another third and short situation. This will probably be Roberts again. I mentioned before, he's never had a carry for negative yards in his career. That's up. Team's leading rusher, Brad Roberts. Isaiah Daniels the keep. Puts the foot in the ground and gets another first down. So the 39 of Air Force and Nolan Cockrell. Four tackles against Navy last week makes the stop for Army. Well, that play probably looks familiar because Army runs it all the time. It's just quarterback zone. And the reason why you do that in those situations is it gives you an extra blocker. You know, then you get to follow the fullback up into the hole. So those are two really good short yardage plays. The fullback dive as well as the quarterback zone. Sophomore from Franklin, New Jersey. Hazik Daniels leads the way for Air Force. The keep Daniels big pick up. First down and then some for Air Force. In the plus territory. Finally stopped by Cameron Jones of Army. But not before he marches for some good real estate for the Falcons. Give him 16 yards. Yeah, watch Adam Jewell, the right tackle here on the option. The right tackle, Adam Jewell, he's going to go in, boom. He gets Eric Smith right there. And as soon as Cockrell closes, Daniels is by him. So if you're able to get the linebacker to that side blocked the way Jewell did, as soon as he got around Cockrell, there was nothing but green grass. Injured last year, first year starter, as it Daniels. Down. Pitches this time. And the first time we've seen a touch there from Caden Rensburg. Pitch on the play right He's got some good wheels. We know when he gets the edge, he can take it the distance. Yeah, and watch. This is option play. You'll see Cam Jones, 27, come flying in from the top of your screen again. Pretty darn good job there in run support by Cam Jones, the number four corner. He's got a pick. Doing the job there in run support. Probably would have liked to make the tackle for a gain of one or two, but at least he was there ready to fill his responsibility of having the pitch man. That pick against Mercer. Wow. Diving interception early this year at Mikey. It's a good one for the Black Knights. Second down. Daniels changing the play here. Daniels. Trump, Smith right away. Face to face. The physical contact. Third down coming up. Watch 53, Eric Smith. He reads it. They're not able to get him blocked. Boom. The left guard fell down there. Laufenberg, the All-American, got tripped up. And as soon as he fell down, Eric Smith, he is such a knockdown tackler. I mean, when he gets you in his sights, you're dead. You're not going anywhere. Air Force 1 and 2. Third down try so far. Could very easily be four down territory here. Unlike most college football teams, they can run it here if they want to. Here's Daniels. 
sets, throws, nearly picked by Jones, looking for a second reception of this first half, intended for Brandon Lewis, a junior from San Diego. Now, decision time, looks like a punt for Troy Calhoun. Calhoun really likes his special teams. He likes playing the field position game. I think you get to fourth and six here. I think this is the right decision to punt it. The one thing I will point out is Daniels has had two throws and they've both been way off. So that's something that the Air Force coaches are talking about right now. They either need to get him into a rhythm or not throw it because neither pass has really been very good. Joseph Carlson, senior Frisco, Texas, kicks to Robinson. Indicates for and makes the fair catch. At about the seven, and Army takes over for Jeff Munkin. Trying for his third CIC trophy today against Air Force. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. Proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of, we're made for. By Serve Pro's Proactive Cleaning Program. Certified Serve Pro Clean. A higher standard of clean for your business. By Rogue, don't we give? And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Beautiful look, Mikey Stadium. Almost winter here in the Mid Hudson Valley. First shot was a Lusk Reservoir. We do not believe, Ross, we're going to have cannons today because the Corps Cadets, in fact, have gone home for winter leave. Run play, first down, Jacoby Buchanan dragging tacklers for a first and then some to the 25-yard line. And Tyler Tyler is hurt behind the play, gain of 16. Boy, I was Buchanan. watching, yeah, I was watching Buchanan carry half the Air Force team. I don't know what happened to Tyler Tyler. I wasn't looking behind the play. I was watching Jacoby Buchanan move the pile. Let's see what happens. Ooh, helmet to helmet right there by an Air Force defender after he gave the ball to Buchanan. Wow. Brandon Gooding, outside linebacker with the heavy contact to Tiger Tyler, who already was out of the game for a while. And we saw Christian Anderson replace him with the bloody lip. We talked about this as a big theme, it's something we talked about on our Zoom yesterday. Little Tina with Brent Davis, offensive coordinator. We have a smaller quarterback running this triple option offense. He's going to take some shots. You know, I'll be curious to see if they look at that for targeting. Because Gooding, he didn't hit him with the crown of his helmet. It was more face mask to face mask. But they might consider Tyre Tyler to be defenseless there. I mean, look, he hands the ball off. He's not even looking. He just turns around. And maybe it even was with the crown of the helmet a little bit, that first initial contact. He's defenseless. Remember, there's two standards for targeting. Could have an added targeting here on Brandon Gooding. Very possible, Ross, and I think it was. Take a look at it again. Yeah, I think you can debate whether or not he used the crown of his helmet. So remember, the crown is sort of your forehead, your hairline up. This will be one more angle on it. right side of your screen. But it's head or neck. So I think you can debate whether or not it's the crown of his helmet. But certainly, in my mind, Tyre Tyler is defenseless there. And so that's going to be a defenseless player to the head or neck area and a targeting indicator, which is leading with your helmet. Keep in mind, Grant Donaldson, star linebacker for Air Force, sitting out the first half today. He was flagging the game you did at Utah State in Logan for targeting second half in that win over the Aggies. He's not available to the second half here today against Army. So that possibly is another linebacker lost. The play is under review for a possible After target. After reviewing the play, there is no foul for targeting. Second down. Okay. Well, so then that means in my mind that they, they do not believe that Tyler was a defenseless player. I, I agree that it probably was not crown of the helmet, but it certainly was a, a head, you know, hit to the head or neck area. And they're going to say Tyler was not defenseless. I'm not sure I agree with that one. No indicator. That's what the replay officials have told our production crew here. Brad Van Park, our referee here today at West Point. Well, leading with the helmet is an indicator. So I would disagree with him on that. Me too. 
He definitely led with the helmet, and that's the targeting indicators are launch, crouch, lowering head, leading with helmet, shoulder, forearm, fist, etc., to attack an opponent. That was absolutely leading with the helmet. So Buchanan is to be back, and Anderson, at least for one play, and maybe more, is back at quarterback for him. For all that first down. Here's Anderson. Takes the hand on keeps, navigates, lunges ahead. Parker Norton stopped defensively for Air Force. You know, the one good thing about Army having to play so many quarterbacks this year, Dave, is that when somebody goes down, you're bringing a guy like Anderson, you know, who started the opener, started a bunch of games. The coaches really feel good about him being out there, and, you know, now he's getting his opportunity. Been out a month. Injury issues this year. But Army's leading passer is Christian Anderson. Your second down. Good line option read. There's a the There's a big pick up again for Anderson. First down. Anderson on the carry. He, he almost took that to the house. And 38. And that injury timeout. Looks like Parker Norton. Shaking up for Air Force. Gain of 10. It's another Christian outside, Anderson. Yeah, another outside linebacker there, Dave. You know, Donaldson's out until the second half. We saw what just happened with Gooding, and now Norrin, another outside linebacker, is banged up. Senior McKinney, Texas, three starts this year. Five tackles against Army in Colorado Springs at Falcon Stadium last year. And a tight game won by Air Force. We'll take a timeout. Army by a field goal in this rivalry game over Air Force. Beautiful home overlooking the Hudson River and the United States Military Academy. 3 nothing game here back down at Tina. Army quarterback Tyre Tyler is just outside their injury tent. What they're doing is they're checking his face and his jaw. They're also using their hands to, to see where his eyes follow. Now, we have no official word from Army yet what this injury is or what they're checking. They also make him you know, open his mouth and stick his tongue out. I'm just giving you the play-by-play -play here. There are times where Tyler appears to be in a lot of pain. He already has gauze on his up his right nostril from the blood that we saw earlier as far as Santa McCoy he's back on the sideline he's retaped his right ankle but he's holding his helmet for now guys he keeps testing out that ankle no word yet if he'll be able to return Tina thanks so much great updates close side those two key Army offensive players and it's the QB you can the handle the freight train the steamroll Physical running back on that V-back spot. Triple option offense for Army. Lunges ahead to about the 44. They're having some success running the ball right now. I mean, the play before this last one, Anderson tripped over Buchanan's leg. If he didn't, he would have taken that to the house. Army is very, very close here. This is the best they've done running the football in the last couple games. 30 carries, 128 yards. Army averages 58.6 carries a game. That's tops in the nation. Second down. Darrell Robinson into plus territory. And another first down for Army. Got the speed, got the wheels. And the chains move for the Black Knights. This is just power. Let's watch the captain. Left guard Mike Johnson. Everybody has this. Gap scheme. Get up in there, Mike. Boom. Good block. It actually gets two. Kicked out the defensive lineman, Sylvanic, and got a piece of the linebacker. Johnson got two there to get a first down for the Black Knights. Robinson, no rushing touchdowns, has a couple receiving touchdowns. One against Tulane, one against Mercer. He is their threat. Play selection, look at that. Run the ball a lot today, aren't we? Another rushing attempt to the 45 yard line for Anderson. And I got news for you, Dave. They're getting four or five yards a pop right now. I wouldn't expect to see a pass anytime soon. I know sometimes Brent Davis likes to try to throw the ball when you're least suspecting it. I don't blame him for that. But, man, if you're getting four or five, six yards a clip like this, make them stop it. Now they're out of the gun again. They really like the quarterback follow out of this. 280 rushing yards a game, fourth best in the nation for Army. To play today. Howard. Sets up a third down. Inside the 45 to about the 43 with a gain of two. 
ran that play quite a bit last week against Navy. That's the split zone where everybody's running zone up front. The fullback blocks back one direction. Third and four, very likely four down territory. So they really just need to get two yards a pop on these next two plays. Stop made by Jake Stern of Air Force, seeing significant playing time here in the first half. On third down, Buchanan. Stop short, about two yards shot. Gain of two for Jacoby Buchanan. Trey Witt, the senior for Air Force, makes the stop for the Falcons. Decision time again on fourth and two. Well, remember, there really aren't very many decisions to be made for Jeff Munkin. Most of what he does is based on the analytics and their success, their track record in these exact situations. Fourth and two or less, they almost always go. I agree with this. It's a good, it's a good two yards though here. Unbalanced line to the left. They have had some success coming back to the weak side to the right. Looking for the 21st fourth down conversion of the year. Here's Anderson, a second effort, push backwards. He did not get there. Air Force answers the call and turns it over on downs. Will Trawick comes out with the ball. And Air Force has got it back thanks to the big defense. Anderson, the read, Trawick and company the stop. In today's installment of Armed Forces Greatest Legends, brought to you by the Exchange, we take a look at the 2014 matchup between Air Force and Army. Air Force Falcons quarterback Cale Pearson accumulated 182 total yards, including two touchdown passes. Falcons knocked off the Black Knights that day, 23-6 en route to the CIC Trophy. They won it as well in 2016. That's the last time Air Force won the Commander in Chiefs Trophy. They've done that 20 times. Navy has 16, Army has eight. Well, the Troy big Calhoun, sorry, Ross and Air Force want to do it again, don't they? Yeah, and the big thing in my mind is the seniors for Air Force have never won it. And it's been over a decade since they've had a, a class come through and not win it. Air Force great defense takes over first and ten. Here's Daniels on a rollout. Too tall, though. And the pass there for Brandon Lewis incomplete. He is just off. And I like that play design. Lewis is a guy they like to get the ball to in space. He was wide open. It was a good play call by Mike Thiessen, the offensive coordinator for Air Force, and Daniels just airmailed it. 0 for 3 throwing so far. Let's see Daniels with a pit from Cameron Jones in the first quarter. Roberts featured back here for Air Force. Totes the rock, Brad Roberts. First down and then so the edge. Robert's big pickup. Tiptoes the sideline may have stepped out at about the 29. Air Force in business with a big pickup. They've had a lot of success. It's counter action. Watch everything in the backfield. Makes you think we're going one way, and then Roberts brings it all the way back behind the center. Nice job there. They got the backup center in the game. Britton Beasley, 6'1", 330, got a really nice block, and Air Force is in business. See him trying to tiptoe down the sideline. Gain of 30. And a first down. Robert stays busy. Runs right into the captain, John Rattle. Final home game for Johnny Nation. One of the great stories of this very unusual 2020 season. Yeah, I mean, he played 21 snaps before this year, and now he's going to the Hula Bowl and is considered a, a prospect for the next level. Had older brothers that played at Penn State and Princeton. He's been terrific. These linebackers for Army are outstanding. That's up second down. Not much there because. Rabina Bonsu, junior from Austell, Georgia, makes the play defensively for Army, gain of one. Watch Bonsu, who missed last week's game. Watch him take on the block. Ugh, that's all American. Then rips through, sheds him, and makes the play. You got a 315 pound man blocking him, and he shed him and make the tackle. That's a big boy play by Bonsu. Defensive coordinator, Nate Woody, uncertain how many snaps they get out of Bonsu today. In our Zoom call with him yesterday, 
Sets up third down from the 25. Play fake. Keep Daniels. Cockrell, a piece of him, lunging forward. And he's about a yard and a half shy. Well, Cedric number one, Cunningham also started Ross yeah, the play. Yeah, number one, you got to go. And number two, they got to be aware of the clock now. I mean, it's 38, 37. They've got three timeouts. I would have called a timeout right after that. It looks like he's going to take it all the way down and maybe attempt another field goal. Showing a lot more faith in his kicker than he is in his ability to think his team can get short yardage situations. Interesting. He's settling for a field goal here. Tevi shoot belts roll kicker for Air Force missed wide left first attempt of this game. Coach Calhoun will take the timeout with one on the play clock. Timeout Air Force their first of the half. It'll be immediate timeout over nine seconds remaining in our first half from West Point. Three nothing game. Punched out. Up on the Verizon halftime report, Brent Stover, Houston, Hunt, Kevin Carter, Danny Cannell. Get you caught up with all the latest scores and news in college football and preview the SEC championship game between number seven Florida against number one Alabama Atlanta tonight, 8 Eastern CBS. Mistakes, a big storyline, Ross, for Air Force. Well, it started with the interception by Cam Jones. Not a good decision by Hazeed Daniels, and then they pulled the first field goal attempt to the left. They missed some open throws and Tell you what, Troy Calhoun has a lot of faith in Tevi shoot pelt roll. I get it. He made four field goals against Navy. Miss from 32 wide left. This from 37 with nine seconds to go in the first half. Miss this one too. Also wide yes, left. And no good to keep this a three-nothing game for Army. Special teams problems for the Falcons. And five seconds to go. 0 for 2 for Tevi. Shoot. Pelts roll. Well, and that's going to affect Troy Calhoun's decision making moving forward. You know, he, he misses one. Okay. You hook two of them. I think next time he's going to go for it in these fourth and short situations. See the laces there, Russ? It was, it was hooking left yeah. all the way. And here's the thing both of those, Dave, were fourth and a yard or fourth and a yard and a half. I mean, he really could have elected to go for it in both those situations. Looks like Army will take a knee here. In the final five ticks of our time first half, first the timeout call Air Force. by Air Force. Their second of the half. It'll Song be 30 seconds from in length. Nick Stokes a moment ago for Army. Black Knights have blocked seven kicks this year. That's number one in the FBS. Junior Bowler, Colorado. Tevi shoot Peltrol 0 for 2. Field goal tries. For Air Force today, Anderson takes an eight, and that should do it for the first half. From here at Mikey Stadium, the two military academies vie for the 49th all-time commander in chief's trophy. Look at that, seven straight quarters, about a point. And that thrill over Georgia Southern last time. Anyone scored against the Black Knight defense end of the first half. Three nothing game. Army over Air Force. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network. Presented by the Home Depot. Getting set for the start of the second half from Mikey Stadium. 49th CIC Trophy on the line. 3 0 game. Quinn Moretzky holding points out of the first half. A 24 yard field goal for Army. Welcome back, Dave and Ross. Rejoined by Tina. Field level. This is the same score last week. You were here calling on radio. 3 0 Army led Navy. So the question is, what can Air Force do to flip the script today? Well, by the way, this is about what I expected. And the thing that's weird is Air Force, Hazik Daniels over six yards to carry. Roberts is over eight yards to carry. They've moved the ball pretty well. It's just been the mistakes early on. It was the interception. Terrific play by Cam Jones. And they've had some short yardage situations where they got stuffed, but twice. They've been deep in Army territory on fourth down, and rather than going for it, they've elected to kick a field goal both times. It's been hooked to the left. Ross, let's take a look at the McDonald's first half stats. What stands out to you here? Well, total plays, time of possession. It's one of the reasons why you look at Brad Roberts, 8.1 yards to carry, Hazik Daniels, 6.4. You think, how have they not scored? Well, it's the third down conversions. It's the missed kicks. They just haven't had the ball very much. 
Bryce Honecker, Jr. from Howe, Texas, will kick off here for Air Force. First time we've seen him. A.J. Howard, Tyrell Robinson to receive for Army. And the second half underway from Mikey Stadium. Here's Robinson from the 13. Fastest cadet belted outside of 25. Back down to Tina. Well, first official word yet on Santa McCoy and Tyre Tyler. However, I did see Christian Anderson warming up. It looks like he's starting here the second half, and I watched Tyler hug Anderson as well. I'll be keeping an eye on that. Now, Coach Munkin said we just got to score points. He said the offense will look different. He said with Tyre, we're more physical. We'll go up the middle, have more quarterback follows. I asked if he would throw more with Christian Anderson. He said, oh, no, we're running this one till the end. However, when I spoke to Troy Calhoun on the Air Force side and asked him, about going for the field goals twice on fourth and short. He said, yeah, I guess we're all second guessing ourselves right now, aren't we? Dave? Tina, thanks. Great info. Anderson starts the second half. McCoy is there. Chris Anderson turns up field. And a good game. First run of this second half. It's going to be all run, as Tina talked about, with the coaches. First half possessions. Ross, let's break them down here. Well, it just always cracks me up. Doing three possessions. Look at that. Nine plays, 20 plays for a field goal. Nine plays. This is Service Academy football. Anderson, not as good between the tackles, but he's a pretty good outside runner. Buchanan lumbers ahead. He might be a little shy. Stopped by George Sylvanic. All Mountain West honorable mention pick this week. Great quarter for Army in the third. Look at that, 91-30. It has been Outscoring outstanding. Their opponents. Yeah, they, they have been outstanding. And boy, you feel like if they could march down and get a touchdown here, that would go such a long way towards. A what? A touchdown? Yeah. <laughs> that would go such a long way towards a victory. Still feels, though, like a, a critical mistake will probably end up being the difference in this one. Third and short. Buchanan feature B back, trucks forward through the line of scrimmage, has a first down for Army. What a great nickname, by the way, the wrecking ball for Jacoby Buchanan. Very appropriate. Take a look at today's Casper player profile. There's the wrecking ball himself, sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. A great high school lacrosse player, as we talked about. You would have been a good defenseman lacrosse. Maybe a goal. I just like in the cross how you can just hack them with your stick the whole time. I can't believe they let you do that. First down. Fake to Tyrell Robinson. Here's Christian Anderson. A blocker ahead. Anderson keeps a big pickup. Treyway finally makes the stop for Air Force into Falcon territory. First down, gain of 13. Watch him. He says, go, Jacoby. Go, big fella. He made the decision. He's going to push him in the back a little bit, made the decision to run. You go get that guy. That's like when you're in the backyard right there. That is awesome. I was a pulling guard in high school, and our backs used to do that every once in a while. Push me to the guy you want. McCoy's back in here, Ross. Start of the second half. Begins this series as the B-back. And Anderson puts a foot in the ground and gets about a yard for Army. Best first half defensively for Air Force. Real Trawick had that fumble recovery at nine tackles. And seven tackles for Damani Hansford, the corner of Air Force. That's the key right there for Air Force is to get a stop of only one yard on first down. Now you've kind of gotten Army behind the chains a little bit where they need to get more yards here to be comfortable. Ready, ready. On second down, it's Buchanan. Bursting through the line of scrimmage again. And close to what he needed for a first down. Nor in the stop defensively for Air Force. Give him nine. Chains on the move. Watch the center. Connor Bishop, the sophomore, right there. Ooh, he gets low on the point of attack. And Mike Johnson on the backside. Such a well-blocked fullback dive. Mike Johnson, his leverage is so good. His pads are always so low. It's like he's three feet off the ground. Brent Davis, offensive coordinator, in the press box, pumped. Now, first down. Let's go! Boy, the captain lunges ahead. He's got a couple more yards for Army. And that's what you want, right, Ross? On that first down, two, three yards, four yards can be enough. Yeah, I always look at it like three yards is a tie, four yards or more is a win for Army, two yards or less is a win for the defense. So. In my mind, that's a win for Air Force right there, holding it to only two yards. 
Tyson Riley, freshman, Mount Vernon, Missouri, is going to make his first appearance here. He's be back behind the quarterback, Christian Anderson. Remember, no Kate Barnett, no Anthony Atkins there. Anderson keeps and runs into trouble right away. That was quick. McKinley O'Neill gets to him, senior, a junior from Dripping Springs, Texas, big play defensively for Air Force. That's the second time O'Neill's made a tremendous play. Nobody blocked him. He comes inside and then redirects and get just enough of Christian Anderson. O'Neill's not a guy you've heard a lot about this year, but he's made a couple of tremendous tackles for losses in this game. Air Force needs something. A big play either side of the ball, special teams, and they need some energy. Anderson spins, nobody there to pitch the ball to. Keeps broken play and gets to the 40. And back to the line of scrimmage. This is what's happened with Army. They've moved the ball until they've gotten in Air Force territory, and then they've stalled out. You know, they were moving it with ease there, and then three plays in a row, they got nothing. They're going to punt. They should punt, continue to try to play the field position battle like they did last week against Navy when Harding put five inside the 20. Harding, a tremendous season. Mark and his head coach told us that this week, Peterson makes the fair catch. Tackle is made by Grant Donaldson, by the way, from Air Force. Back after being suspended first half, had a targeting call against Utah State. 32-yard punt for Army's Zach Harding. Start your Sundays with another pregame show as the CBS Sports Network crew breaks down all the recent news and gets you ready for every game on the NFL calendar tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern, on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. All right, Ross, check the Ram caught football. Playoff, top 10, Alabama floor tonight, 8 Eastern on CBS. Notre Dame Clemson is underway in the ACC. Well, that's obviously a gigantic game going on. Ohio State wasn't pretty, but they got it done. So it looks like they'll be in the college football playoff. So a lot of eyes will be on that Alabama Florida game tonight on CBS after Notre Dame Clemson ends. That's the college football playoff poll powered by Ram Trucks. Worst starting field position of the game here for Air Force to begin this drive. And he wants to go again. Lemberg gets his second touch of the day. Cam Jones and company. On the tackle. Markwell Broughton. Pick against ULM and the Citadel this year. Home wins for Army. Gain of six for Caden Remsburg. So I called the UNLV game. Air Force Ross two years ago. Only three players have returned as starters. Remsburg is one of those guys. Ferguson, Laufenberg on the line. That's it. Yep. A lot of turnover, a roster renovation in Colorado Springs. Here is Caden Remsburg. And he is in a whole lot of trouble. Nolan Cockrell gets there and puts him down for a big loss. Big defensive play for Army. Yeah, you'll see Cockrell, but it starts out here. Watch Hazik Daniels when he comes out there. It's terrific responsibility. Look, Amadeo West has him. Terry Mendel has him. They're going to go all the way back. That's not where you want to go. That's a huge loss. And it's because everyone was right where they were supposed to be. Even Marquel Broughton was right there. Brings up third and nine. Daniels has really struggled throwing the ball so far tonight. Loss of four. Here's Hazik Daniels. Trying for his first completion. Dancing, scrambles, trouble. Brannigan can't make the play, but does get enough. Zeke uh, Daniels' legs to get him out of bounds. And a punting situation here for Air Force again. Brannigan is so good in space. He's got the speed. Cockrell, look at Cockrell's arms, by the way. I mean, whew, guy is put together. <laughs> he is jacked. I'm jealous. Uh, but Radigan making that play on Daniels in space, and now Army has a great chance to get excellent field position here. Joseph Carlson only had one punt against Utah State in Air Force's last game 16 days ago. Went for 48 yards at elevation in Logan. No block punt this time. Only seven total block kicks. Robinson lets that bounce in midfield and a good Air Force roll. We'll check up at about the 37. Army back on offense in a one-score game, 49-yard punt from Air Force's Joseph Carlson. 
Thursday, 9 Eastern, we have college troops action. 18th ran San Diego State will take on St. Mary's, the West Coast Conference. Catch it all here on CBS Sports Network. 121st edition Army Navy here last week. And the defense for the Black Knights was fabulous runs. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'll remember. I was here doing it on the radio side, and I'll remember the fog, and I'll remember the Army defense, the goal line stand, and Darian McDonald getting the start in place of Malcolm Morrison. He outscored Navy by himself. 116 minutes and counting. Jeff Munkin's defense has not allowed a point. 117 yards to Navy last week. Fewest since 2011 a win over Fordham. Anderson, the offense takeover. Anderson, the ball to play again. Tackle made by Will Trewitt. And McKinley O'Neill had really big games defensively for Air Force here tonight. Yeah, those two guys. McKinley O'Neill and Treywick have been everywhere. McKinley O'Neill has been making plays up and down the line of scrimmage, having the game of his life so far. Had a total of two tackles entering the game here tonight. <laughs> He's far exceeded that. He's played well. Second down. Canning is the future be back. And it lumbers through traffic, spins ahead, and goes to about the 42. And three for Buchanan. Well, Third remember, down coming up. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Remember this about McKinley O'Neill. Michael Purcell was supposed to start. He's not here. Fear Good got the start. Fear Good got hurt. In comes McKinley O'Neill. You know, sometimes in life you don't know what you have until you have to use it. Because O'Neill really didn't even play that much, and now he's been the player of the game on defense so far for Air Force. Short and drive backwards. What a push up front by the Air Force defensive front. Yeah, and Donaldson's in there now, too. Look, they went with the fullback dive. I think he had a softer spot if he cut it back to the left a little bit. Buchanan might have been able to get there. There was a softer area for him to hit to the left, but Air Force up to the task again. Army gets that three and out, gets pretty good field position, can't do anything with it. Second punt for Zach Harding. Seven punts as we talked about a career high against Navy in this stadium last week. 15 nothing win for Army. Well, there are drivers. Peterson watches this bounce. And a good Army cadet ball. To about the 13. So our one score game, the 44 yard punt. Time out. It's a beautiful night. It's a cold night here at West Point. 3 0 Army lead on rival Air Force. This year, the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway is back and bigger than ever, giving away $2 million in tuition. Learn more at drpepper.com. Army has two shutouts for Nate Woody, the new defensive quarter this year. Three points allowed to Mercer in a home win. The points per game, Ross, remarkable. Last year, 23 points allowed, 41st in the nation. This year, just under 15, number four in the country. Defense much improved. Yeah, look at that. Holy Cross and Penn State back in 1966. Can you imagine if they would shut out Navy and Air Force back to back? Roberts feature back. Daniels, trouble. That ball was on the ground. Watch, Roberts. Never really had it. Fortunate bounce for Air Force to get that back right away. You know, I talked about a critical error probably being the difference in the game. That that was almost it. Not been Daniel's best effort. The offense has really struggled. Changing the play again. Usually that's based on the, the wing back going in motion, what they see. Here's second down. Five step drop. Daniels fires. Open man this time. Morris has got it to catch. Much needed for Air Force. Finally a completion. Dan Morris and the Falcons move the ball. Army defense. It started with that interception. And the linebackers just face to face tackles there on the pullback. Eric Smith has been a man child in this game. 
but credit Hazik Daniels. His best throw of the night brings up third and short. Wide open, Morris put it right on him. First completion of the game, picks up nine, 31. Air Force needs it. He's shut out here by this tremendous Army defense. Daniels will keep spot one. First down, gets to the 25, and much needed first down for the Falcons. He sees the soft spot there on the quarterback sneak. Nolan Cockrell kind of swam around it. You don't want to do that on third and short. Our Forces Football proudly sponsored by USAA. Five Air Force first downs, 14 for Army tonight. And Daniels, spread pick. Hazik Daniels going to take a deep shot, has a man! Complete the breakup on the pass intended for Dan Morris, who was there. Cunningham, the breakup for Army. Again, Cedric Cunningham comes flying over right side of your screen. No, sir, I will take that. Wow. Morris was wide open. Cunningham in the middle of the field almost took it right out of his hands. You know, that's one where you want Daniels to throw the ball a little bit earlier if he can because Morris was wide open going down the seam. Could have been a huge play for the Falcons. What a PBU for Cedric Cunningham and Army. Daniels throwing a lot of this drive. Morris been busy, has the catch. Marquell Broughton brings him down, gain of 15, and Patterson has that catch. And all of a sudden, Air Force some success through the air here, Ross. Yeah, Air Force, this looks more like the Utah State game. Just a shallow cross there for Patterson. They're 6'6", 245-pound tight end. And Daniel's starting to throw the ball pretty well. That's three throws in a row that were on the money. The only issue was the one to Morris was a little bit late. Kyle Patterson, 6'6", tight end, sophomore Gilbert, Arizona. Team's leading receiver with 10 catches on the year. First down, again Daniels, throws, sideline route, brought in. Daniels passes complete on Brandon the play. Brandon Lewis has the grab for Air Force. Lewis. Another first down for the Falcons. Knocked out of bounds by Cameron When's the last time you saw Air Force, either one of these teams come out and throw the ball, and Lewis gets up a little bit gimpy after that play. What was that, four throws in a row? And complete a pass until his drive. Yeah, you never see that, but he's in rhythm now. And I think Mike Thiessen, the offensive coordinator for Air Force, realizes that, hey, we're going to be able to throw it a lot better than we've been able to run it so far. Lewis helped off. Remsburg in motion. Right fit. Azeek Daniels on the sprint right. Deep ball again. Patterson breaks this one in. Complete for Air Force inside the 10. This is unbelievable. I mean, Daniels couldn't hit the broad side of a barn in the first half. Now this drive, watch him drive it in the bucket, a deep seven route. That's the old flag route. Perfect throw by Daniels right over the outstretched hand of Cam Jones. You can't hand it to him any better than that. Gain of 39. And first and goal here for Air Force from the nine. What a turnaround. And we talked at halftime, you and I, about trying to flip the script. It's been through the air for the Falcons. Oop. Movement. First penalty of the game. Patterson got a little excited about those two catches he had. Can't hear his mic there, but Brad Van Bart tells us that false start. And Air Force will back up five yards. First penalty tonight. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Air Force trying to get off the snide here and score some points tonight at Mikey. And the last thing Troy Calhoun wants to do right now is settle for a field goal. I can assure you of that. Both the two field goal tries so far. Caden Renberg on a late pitch makes a nice move. Picks up some yards. Jeremiah Lowry, the dog defensive tackle for Army, makes the play. It's game four for Air Force. Yeah, watch this disciplined football, though. They get the dive. They got the quarterback. Watch here comes number 20, Marco O'Brien. Nice job. He was responsible for the pitch. Jeremiah Lowry finishes him off. Army's done a really nice job, for the most part, against Air Force's triple option. They like to get the ball pitched. You know, they like to get the ball in the perimeter more than Army and Navy do. 
Second and goal. 35 seconds left in the third quarter here from Frigid Mikey Stadium tonight. From the 10, here's Daniels. Flushed right, throwing end zone. Patterson incomplete with Markwell Broughton. And Cedric Cunningham on coverage for Army. With 21 seconds to go in the quarter. He had him. This is just a little bit too far for the 6'6 tight end. Patterson, who's been huge on this drive, brings up third and goal. You'd expect Air Force to throw it here, but keep in mind Daniel's legs. He's very good as a scrambler when he doesn't see anything open in the passing game. Big play, third and goal. Army Robert showing Tan. pressure. Here's Daniels. Time delivers. End zone. Caught. Touchdown. Patterson's got it. Air Force on the board for the first time tonight. And the Falcons have the lead. Take a look at Patterson. He's going to come from your left. This is a tight window. Shows a lot of faith in his arm. Wow. To fit it in there between Morrison and Radigan, Morrison couldn't have had much better coverage than that. Wow, Daniels loves throwing it to Patterson clearly and showed a lot of faith in his arm, delivering that strike right there to Big 88 again. That was the Kyle Patterson drive. Anthony Rodriguez, new kicker here for Air Force. Has a PAT after Tevi shoot belts roll, missed two field goals first half from the Falcons. Well, first it was Patterson down the sideline. And then Daniels goes right back to the big fella. Air Force has the lead. All right, Ross, time for our muscle milk game summary. How about the passing yards for Air Force on that drive? Yeah, how about getting all of them on that drive? Unbelievable drive by Air Force. Kind of came out of nowhere, Dave. I mean, they hadn't really been throwing it very well at all. Hazeek Daniels able to hit Brandon Lewis and the big one on the old flag route to Patterson. And then third down, third and goal. If he doesn't catch that, if that gets tipped, they're trying to kick another field goal to tie it. What a throw and catch by Daniels to Patterson. A couple of sophomores. 87-yard drive, 85 of which came through the air after no passing yards until that point of the game. Amazing. Bryce Honaker will kick off to A.J. Howard. Tyrell Robinson for Army, trailing for the first time here tonight. Short kick, A.J. Howard grabs up 24. Steve Rolls, some tacklers out to about the 36. DeBrent Stover with an update in New York. 36-yard line. Dave, ACC title game, Trevor Lawrence firing a strike to E.J. Williams. Already up 7-3, this 33-yard touchdown makes it 14-3. They've added a field goal. Clemson 17-3 in the second, guys. Hey, Brent, thanks so much. Big game in the ACC. Big game here at West Point. First great ACC title, Dabo Sweeney. And the Tigers try to get it done over Notre Dame, an ACC team this year for the first time. Here's first down. Anderson remains in at quarterback for Army. In the final moments of the third quarter, Tyrell Robinson picks up two to end three. And the third, Air Force a lead, 7-3 on Army. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot, ready for the fourth quarter. Here on posts, United States Military Academy, West Point, New York, Ridge at night. Four cadets on leave for holidays, so a few are here. Football players. The JV team, the freshman team. That's about it. Some local community. From here on post, USMA allowed into Mikey here. 
It's a big drive for Army right now, now that they're down by more than a field goal. Anderson remains in the game at quarterback for Army. Turns up field, has a nice pickup. And on the second down run to begin the fourth quarter. And has a first down for Army. Let's look back. First half tire Tyler Ross. Got banged up a couple times, didn't he? Yeah, he got up that time looking at his hands and his nose was already bleeding. And then this one, which I still can't believe wasn't a targeting, hit him again. I mean, he has gotten beat up in this game, and it looks like it'll be Anderson's game for the rest of the way. Tyler ran for 62 yards before the lead. Cody Buchanan powers forward, barely in the Air Force territory to the 49. The problem for Army hasn't been moving the football. It's been moving the football once they get into Air Force territory. It seems like they run the ball very effectively until they get past the 50-yard line, and after that, they've stalled out. No helmet. Tired Tyler. Tia told us about probably means he's not returning to them. On second down, Anderson runs the action, runs into trouble again. McKinley O'Neill's big night continues for Air Force. He has been omnipresent defensively for the Falcons. No game back down to team. Well, Dave, I was told technically Tyre Tyler is available if needed. However, I have watched him this entire second half. He's been on the sidelines. His hands have been in his pocket. He's wearing a knit hat. He is not holding on to his helmet. And he often stands by trainers. He's alone right now, but he often stands by trainers. They often talk to him, ask him questions. I saw one trainer even put his arm around Tyre and hug him a little bit. So it does not appear as if he will see action this second half. Tia, thanks so much. Keep a close eye on that. Anderson's taking over. Here's third down. A big play. Oh, freeze option or a broken play. Tyrell Robinson has the catch, but he's sworn by a gray jerseys. And Air Force with their red tail uniforms honoring the Tuskegee no Airmen. No gain, fourth and five. Yeah, Air Force was not fooled at all there. Army tried to throw a little bit of a pop pass on a skinny post. It was well covered. Anderson really did well just to get that ball out to Robinson, give him a chance to make a play. But there were way too many Falcons there. Zach Harding set an Army record last year, 48.2 yards a punt. And Boots here from his 40. Anderson wants a fair catch and makes it at the 15-yard line for Air Force. Falcons get it back up 7-3. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Exchange. Welcoming home veterans to their exchange shopping benefits. By Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? By Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. And by McDonald's. Second touchdown catch of the year, Kyle Patterson. Also had one against San Jose State earlier this season on the road. Only points of the night for Air Force, trying for their 21st CIC, first since 2016. Joe Calhoun has done it four times, 2010, 2011. And also in 14 and 16 for Air Force. Falcons take over. Roberts. Not much, maybe a yard and a half. Back to Brent Stover, New York, with an update. Guys, the Mountain West title game, Nick Starkle begins 4 of 4, 89 yards, flipping it out for this touchdown. 55 yards, Trey Walker. Boise State has countered with a field goal, but late first, the Spartans lead 7-3. Brent, thanks. A chance to call Nevada, Boise State, and Nevada against Santa State last week in Vegas. What a year it's been for the Spartans and Brent Brennan out in the Mountain West. Amazing. Daniels, second down. Hazard Daniels, flushed right. Gonna run with it. Daniels, first down and then some. That score out of bounds outside the 35 at about the 37. 20 yard pickup there for the scampering. Hazard Daniels, first down. Such a great decision by Daniels. There was nobody open. He saw a big seam there. I mentioned earlier in the game, he does this so well. Gets yardage with his legs. I was curious to see how Air Force would play this drive, right? Now they've got a lead. They haven't had a whole lot of success running the football, though, here. It's been through the air. 
but you know they want to try to churn clock as much as they can. First down, whistles and flags first. We have a false start. Well, that's killer. Bags up for Falcons five. And second penalty. Well, tonight for Air Force Army has no penalties in this game. Pre-snap penalties like that drive coaches crazy. And it's especially devastating for these two offenses that they don't really like to throw the ball. In fact, they're the two fewest throwing teams in the country. They both attempt less than 10 passes a game. Although obviously, based on that last drive by Air Force, they certainly can do it when they need to. Daniels was amazing that drive. Five yards, flags again. Another false start for Air Force. Back to back penalties, same variety. This is crazy. I mean, there's no noise here. There's only a couple hundred people here because all of the cadets are gone for Christmas break. I don't know how that happens where you have back to back false starts. So. You'd expect them to go to the air at least once on these next three plays. And the real key thing now, if you're Air Force, is don't make any decision here that creates a turnover. Protect the ball. If you're Daniels, it's not there. Just tuck it away. Air Force going the wrong direction here, partner. First and 20. Daniels, three. It's upfield, not much. Maybe got two. Wrong there for Air Force. So it's second 18. That time it was Radigan. Watch Radigan right here. Watch this collision. These guys live for this stuff. Watch. He sees he's on the back, gets over the top. Oh, boom, right there. Chest in the shoulder. Man, these linebackers, really for both teams. Traywick's been excellent. Donaldson since he's been back in, but Radigan and Aaron Smith as well. They've been so good scraping over the top, getting off blocks, and delivering the boom. Two picks this year for Ragan as well. On pick six, he's been fabulous all year long. That pass way behind Morris. And incomplete. Sets up third and long. Back down to him. And speaking of Radigan, Army defensive coordinator Nate Woody said the first time he met Radigan in preseason, he was last on the depth chart. And uh, look, he's an incredible football player, Woody says, because he has a great IQ. So he studied his opponents. He watched film and executed every mission he has made. And that's why he is able to make big plays. But credit to Radigan, he worked out with his older brothers during quarantine, and that helped him. Got to think, Dave, this is screen or draw here. Third and this long. Third down. Here's Daniels. Dan, thanks for that. As he Daniels throws. Perfectly placed ball for Peterson who makes the grab. What a throw to the 48-yard line. Yeah, maybe the best throw of the night. Gain of 22, first down Air Force. I am stunned. I did not think Air Force would try to get that first down on third and 18. Daniels putting it into a tight window. Thought for sure it'd be a screen or a draw. Look at that, the out route to Peterson. What a throw by Daniels just over the outstretched hand of the corner and third and 18 mark that down that is a significant play in this game senior bellingham washington a huge catch for air force pitch play brad roberts air force top rusher entering play here tonight 378 yards keep in mind they've only played five games armed forces football proudly supported by serve pro Second down. What a throw a moment ago by Daniels. Peterson has first catch of his season against Utah State, the game you called a couple weeks back with Ed Cohen. Yeah, I mean, right now, the difference in this game is Hazik Daniels throwing the football. And even that scramble he had, he's made good decisions, and he has been the star of this game here based on how he's played in the second half. Second down, more luck feature be back. Play fake for Daniels. Gonna take a shot. Deep ball. Second interception of the game, and the cadets 
from here at West Point get the ball back? Well, number one, I, I can't believe they threw this pass right here. Number two, it's a terrific job by Jabari Moore. Jabari Moore has scored defensive touchdowns off of fumbles, off of interceptions. Now he gets a critical interception for the Black Knight. Throw, first responder, and I want to play by Jabari Moore. Hey! Been tied with Marco Brock. Hey! The team leading two picks this year. Moore has his third INT. I mean, he made one of the plays in the U.S. so far in his first game after a suspension against Cincinnati with the break of the pitch from Desmond Ritter of undefeated Cincinnati, the American Conference, brought it back for a touchdown. That was spectacular. Big play here tonight. Yeah, I had never seen that before, by the way. That was unbelievable. That was second and two, by the way, for Air Force. I mean, second and two. They had a chance to churn a lot more clock, easily get at least one more first down. Instead, the Black Knights get their chance. Jones and more interceptions tonight, and Army takes over down this game. First down, one play. Buchanan yields three, second and seven for the Black Knights. Have not seen a lot of Sandin McCoy since that injury. Remember, no bowl game for Air Force this year. They decided not to pursue the postseason. This is it. Season finale tonight. And second down. Buchanan. Powers through traffic, trying to push that pile ahead. Needs the three. Third Army first down. Third down coming up, game five. Two plays in a row. Army's just going forward. We've got a couple of true freshmen out there. Connor Fanukin at right guard. Jordan Law at left tackle. Pretty unbelievable to have two freshmen out there in this situation with the Commander in Chief's trophy on the line. Down that we just saw on bottom of the screen. Richardson taking over with Tyler. And McKinney powers forward. That spot looks right on the money for a first down. He got it. He did. Wide splits. Nice job by Mike Johnson. The left guard again. The center, Connor Bishop. It's almost like wedge blocking on those quarterback, I mean, on those fullback dives, excuse me. Everybody's just blocking to their inside, trying to create a tender spot for Buchanan to hit. First significant action for Anderson since the road loss in New Orleans against Tulane. Pitch play, Tyler Robinson on the left side, trying to create some space. Does so the cutback. And a big pick up for the speedy Tyrell Robinson. Eventually tracked down by Grant Donaldson back in the field for Air Force in the second half. Gain of 16 first down. Yeah, watch Brandon Walters right here. This is my guy. He's going to go back the other way. Now watch the block right here. Come on, go look. He gets him. Tyrell Robinson with the stiff arm. Gets another block from Roberts downfield. And Army is in business. Nice job with the feet staying in bounds. He is quick. First down for Army. Donaldson, contact again. Flag flies in the backfield late. Wow. This is a costly penalty. Army had two guys in motion at the same time. Both wingbacks. It's a mental error by somebody. Illegal motion on the offense. Two players in motion. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Brad Van Vark, referee tonight. Here at West Point, first Army penalty of the game. Comes the wrong time, Ross. You called it. That is the type of play that will keep these coaches like Brent Davis up at night. Because it makes it so difficult for them to come back from a, a loss of five like that. Tyson Riley, featured be back this time. Great pick for Anderson. So Granick, the pursuit, Anderson. Yeah, they've run this before where he's looking. He could have thrown it to Roberts, but there's just so much in front of him. Tyson Riley, look at the block. 43, there you go. I'll cut right behind you. First down. Nice job by the freshman Riley there, planning the Falcon defensive back 
but this is where Army has bogged down when they've gotten into Air Force territory. Buchanan wins a tackle and just about to down. Last moment, shoestring tackle made by Damani Hans for the cornerback of the Falcons. Otherwise, Buchanan's going to truck into the end zone, gain of 14. Buchanan's a little slow to get up now. They're running out of fullbacks. Watch the left guard here, Mike Johnson. Keep your eye on Johnson. It's a little inside trap. Boom! Right there. And up, Buchanan. Another. That's the second time where Army's almost taking it. Watch him. Just right here. The second tackle right there. Oh! His just foot His foot actually got up in the face just of Hansford. Did you see that? He just stomped on Hansford's face unintentionally. Another first down. Uh, Donald's been so active Warriors. since playing in this second half. So, tackle made by Corvin Taylor, the strong safety of Air Force. You were there in Logan, and I thought that targeted call on Donaldson was very questionable. Well, he's here now, and he's playing well, and pretty unbelievable to see Army almost run out of fullbacks. Less than five minutes. This is all four down territory. They're not going to kick a field goal again. Here's second and nine. Anderson, the mesh play, keeps, drives, the legs forward. And gets just outside the 25-yard line. They need the 19 for a first down here, Ross. Well, I'm so impressed by Air Force's defense and their ability to stiff it. Here comes the wrecking ball. Buchanan back in the game. They got two plays to get seven yards here. Obviously not going to kick a field goal at this point in the game. Or at least I would be stunned if they did. It'd be surprising. Three points on the board. Field goal. Moretzky in the first half from 24. That's been all. Better hurry up. They're down. Robinson bangs ahead, but he's short. About three yards. Give him three on the run. Now. What's Jeff Plunkin got in mind here? Yeah, I believe he'll go for it because, man, you're asking a lot to, first of all, make a long field goal and then either get the onside kick or get a three and out. I don't see that happening. They're going to go for it here. They're going to call their best play. Remember, they've had a lot of success with that bootleg. A lot of times they like quarterback zone on these plays, but twice when they've run that bootleg, there's been nobody out there, and Anderson's gotten first downs easily. Huge play with just over three to go in regulation. Campbell Goff, a tackle there for Air Force. Fourth down. Fourth and four. Right feet. Some pressure. Anderson the rollout. Anderson the first down for Army. Moves the chains. Ross, you called it. Huge first down for the Black Knights. Hey, it's worked every time. Why not? Brent Davis and I sharing a bring. Everybody going left. Watch Buchanan, 33. He's got to get outside the edge. Buchanan, 33. Hands inside. No hold. Anderson gets the first down. That's been their best play all night is that quarterback boot with Anderson having the fullback block for him. Not bad having your 260-pound B-back block for you. First down. Anderson takes the pitch. Hansford will stop again. Get to the 10-yard line. Another good pickup from Christian Anderson taking over for the injured Tyre Tyler tonight. Gain of six. Tina's kept us updated on Tyler's condition. If you are Air Force, you need to seriously consider using your timeouts now. Because the clock's not a factor for Army, but if they get a touchdown, the clock's going to be a factor for you. Here's second down. If you can. Bustling through the tackles again. And he has a first down. He gets to the five. First and goal. Can be got off the stop for Air Force. And a gain of five more yards for Army. Clock is ticking here, Ross. Yeah, this is a mistake by Air Force. They need to use a timeout right there. Or at least after this next play. Because Army has four plays to get five yards. I think Troy Calhoun's telling him he wants to call a timeout after this play. Which is the right decision. First and goal. Riley carries, leaps, gets a couple, and a timeout call. Air Force with a minute 25 to go. 
of the second half. Timeout, Air Force, their first and a half. It'll be a media timeout. Timeout of West Point. All right, Ross, let's revisit our Ryan Keys to the game tonight. Well, Air Force didn't get off to a fast start, but they have thrown the ball well. Army's had a pretty good job protecting the ball, and special teams have been pretty nice also. Off the Air Force timeout. Second down coming up here for Army, trying to regain the lead in our slugfest. Low scoring defensive battle. A freezing cold night. The latest game ever played at Mikey Stadium. In Academy history in terms of a calendar date. They've got three plays to get three yards. This will either be Buchanan or Anderson. <laughs> second down. It's Buchanan. Up in it. Short. <laughs> Elisha Palm, corner for Air Force, makes the play. Timeout. Time Called by Air Force. Air Force, their second of the half. It'll be 30 seconds. Last season, Army faced Air Force Colorado Springs. Army took the lead 7 3 right before halftime on the Army Jabari Laws rushing touchdown. Army's loss found a wide open Cam Harrison. Race to the end zone gave the Knights a 13 10 lead. Of course, they for the next possession. Joshua Stiller's touchdown gave the Falcons a 17 13 lead. Tell by four late forwards. Kelvin Hopkins' fourth down pass fell incomplete. Air Force won the game 17 13. What's on the line? A potential 21st CIC trophy, most in series history for Air Force. Army trying for its night. They won back to back Commander Chief trophies in 2017 and 2018. Boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Army down on the goal line, down by four late. This is exactly where they were a year ago. How's it, Falcon Stadium? This is at Mikey Stadium. Third and goal, minute 21 to go. Air Force, one timeout left. It's Buchanan trying to muscle his way toward the goal line. He's pulled backward by Air Force tacklers. No game timeout. Timeout, Air Force. Their third and final of the game. It'll be a 60 second timeout. It's just a fullback power to the left. And he ran right in the back of Mike Roberts, his own wide receiver. Good job by Air Force not giving up any push. They've got their chance to have an epic goal line stand right here. How about this? Fourth and goal coming up with a game on the line. Coming up next, you're on the inside college football crews. They keep you updated. Potential playoff matchups and deliver the top headlines of the day and the night. Here on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. All right, Ross comes down to this fourth and goal for Army. How is this one going to break down? Well, listen, so you either give the ball to Buchanan again or some type of quarterback run. The problem is. McKinley O'Neill has chased down a lot of the quarterback runs from the backside for no gain or even a loss of yardage. So I would think that it would be Buchanan again. They're so close here, and the Air Force using the timeouts actually ends up helping Army if they don't get it. This is it for the game. Fourth and goal for Army. Buchanan lunging. Buchanan is in. in for six. I mean, how great is this? 16 plays, 80 yards, over eight minutes, when they absolutely had to have it. Boom, good push up front. He got in there pretty easily. Terrific effort by Air Force defensively, but Army would not be denied. There's just something special about this group of Black Knights. Their first touchdown drive all game is probably their last drive of the game. Sixth rushing touchdown of the year for Jacoby Buchanan, a sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. And in comes Quinn Moretzky. They try to add a PAT. He's got Ahead again, and the interception got it going. 
Jabari Morris, third hit of the season. Eventually leads to the wrecking ball himself. Jacoby Buchanan is in, and Brent Davis is pumped. 69 rushing attempts tonight for Army out of their 70 plays from scrimmage. How about that? Tonight's play of the game brought to you by Old Tackle Beef Jerky. himself. Jacoby Buchanan Ross, 86 rushing yards and the go-ahead touchdown. Yeah, right behind the freshman Connor Fidoon. You can't make this stuff up. Love the leg drive by Buchanan and the boys. But this game is far from over. The way Hazik Daniels has thrown the ball and what he can do scrambling, plenty of time for Air Force to, at a minimum, get down in field goal range, which has been an adventure for them. Senior Kingsport, Tennessee, Landon Sellers began the year as the top field goal PAT man for me. So planted by Quinn Moretzky. Kicks here of Joshua Storm. Air Force can really use a good return. Stoner lets that go over his head for a touchback. Three-point game. Kicking has been an issue tonight for Tevi. Shoot Peltrol of Air Force. Rossi's missed two. Yeah, you know, and they didn't even have him come in on the extra point. You know, they went to the backup kicker on the extra point. Trying to get to the 30-yard line of Army. That's a quick out who told us this week. Zoom with the Air Force head coach would be the target line for his kick. Let's be honest, though. They get to the 32 or 33 or something, they're going to try it. They try to tie the game. This first down. Daniels, that ball tipped, intercepted. Eric Smith, the pickoff. Third interception of the season. There is a flag down. So let's sort it out. Smith. Who else? He's been such a hammer making tackles today. Now he gets the pick. After the interception, illegal block in the back, number 47 of the intercepting team. That'll be a 10-yard penalty. It'll be first down Army. I think Army fans and coaches will forgive John Radigan, Johnny Nation, for that penalty after the pick, the tip ball, and it comes to Eric Smith. Well, being a Bonsu got gets it. that big left hand on it, almost like a volleyball set right to Eric Smith. Two juniors that have played a lot of football trying to bring home the CIC trophy for their seniors. And they're going to do it. Three in four years for the first time in school history. They'll just have to take two knees. And this Black Knight senior class is one to be remembered. Junior from Bowie, Maryland, with the exclamation point pick. Anderson, the victory formation, takes a knee. Here comes the trophy. It's more than 100 pounds, so it needs some, some 100, 170 pounds. 170 pounds. Two and a half feet tall. That thing is huge. It's almost half a Jacoby Buchanan. <laughs> Maybe one last year, they left it. One of my left Mikey Stadium with a 15-0 loss here last week. What a football game. And Army with a late rally and late touchdown run from Buchanan. Will take home the 2020 CIC, the Commander in Chief's Trophy, returns to Army. 10-7 the final. And the Black Knights have taken the 49th Commander in Chief Trophy Series here at West Point. This is awesome. What a football game. Army didn't score a touchdown all game until they had to. And then they did, and then they get the trophy third in four years. This coaching staff, this team, you want to talk about guts and grits. Unbelievable job representing the long gray line. Ninth time in Academy history, they have won the CIC trophy. And they take it offensive minded. Slugfest here tonight at Mikey 10 7. 
of both alma maters. Play here at Mikey. Always want to sing second. Means you've won the game. And Air Force will hear their alma mater first. Here at West Point tonight. And now, singing second, the West Point Alma Mater. Clinching interception by Eric Smith after Bonsu, who wasn't able to play against Navy, makes arguably the play of the game against Air Force. And what a job by Christian Henderson in relief of the injured Tyre Tyler. And you'll etch the name of Army in 2020, winning the CIC trophy. Down to Tina. All right, Dave, thank you so much. Jacoby Buchanan, it was the touchdown that Army needed. Take us through that game-winning drive as you and Christian Anderson worked together to chip away and get in the end zone. Um, as soon as Jabari got that pick, we knew that it was our time. You know, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that we weren't going to uh, march down and get that score. You know, we want to take it inch by inch, yard by yard. Um, you know, we just never lost faith. We always knew that we were going to go down there and uh, get that touchdown. And then at the goal line, that's just what we do. We confirm our goal line. You know, I was nervous. I knew the offensive line was going to get that push, and that's what they did. Jacoby, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us, and congrats on the Commander in Chiefs Trophy. We are going to bring in your head coach now, Jeff Munkin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Munkin, okay. yes, yes, we're, we're more than six feet. <laughs> Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Your third Commander-in-Chief's trophy in four seasons. And you told me 3-0 three no, three nothing wasn't going to win this game at halftime. What, what do you think of the way that your team responded in the second half? Oh, they did a great job. I'm just so proud of the effort. And, and uh, you know, when we needed a drive right there at the end, the offense came through. We, did, we, we really just kept stalling out. And, Give them credit. They, 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 we weren't sustaining blocks, and we just weren't doing it enough and consistently enough. 
to get the ball into scoring position. And, and uh, when we needed one, our guys just absolutely gutted out. They were just determined. And great job by the defense and, and our defensive staff. So really, uh, really proud. Great to see that trophy coming back home. <laughs> Christian Anderson, Jacoby Buchanan really taking the load after Tyre Tyler and Santa McCoy got hurt in the first half. But how does that represent really what this entire team has done for you all season long here at Vikey Stadium undefeated? <laughs> it has been. That's kind of been the story of this team. but. You know, it's just a spirit in this brotherhood here, and uh, and these guys love each other. How hard they fought for each other, and and uh, just another example. One guy goes down, another guy steps up, and uh, that's what we've been doing all year. So there's there's almost 50 guys on our team that weren't able to dress out today, and uh, that just tells you these guys. They, it didn't matter. They they, they were they just believed they were going to win and found a way. Coach, time for you to put that trophy back in the trophy case. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot. Beat Navy. Back to you, Tina, guys. Thanks. Final score again. Army beats Air Force 10-7 for Ross Tucker and Tina Servasio, the entire crew. It's Dave Ryan saying so long for Mikey Stadium. Their presentation at CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now saying New York City for Inside College Football presented by Advil. Brent Stover and the gang. Guys, take it away.